sponsored by Anajar and Levine, Accident Attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. We now return to Tampa Bay's number one morning show, The Mike Calter Show. It is 8.42 on the Mike Countner Show. It's 102.5 The Bone. This band played last night. This guy did not. <laughs> this is Foreigner who played. Now, Craig Gass is here with us. You went to the show? Yeah, I took a friend of mine who lives out here, uh, Todd LaTorre, uh-huh. to go see the show. Who is the singer for Queens right now? Todd's the singer. Oh, Queens, okay. Right? Yeah. The singer great Queens, singer, right? great drummer too. A uh, great drummer. Uh, he's been in the band uh, in Queens, right, for eleven years. And now, uh, don't you think it's unfair that Queens, is calling themselves Queens, and Foreigner is calling themselves Foreigner? I mean, Queens, actually has members in it yeah. besides. Uh, but Jeff Tate is pretty much, and no offense, to this guy, because everybody says he's a great singer and he's all that. He's but I mean, I, yeah, they should just do their own their own new band. It's funny, he said that they were originally going to call it West, Wilton, Eddie, Scott, and Todd. Okay. That, that was what they were, fine gonna, with that. they were going to call it that, and, and then they just continued on as, as Queensryche. But Foreigner, not a single original no. member. Yeah, there's Foreigner. no Foreigner members in Foreigner, which uh, is basically you're seeing a cover band, which is fine, because the music quality is still there, and I'm going to be honest with you, I couldn't spot any of the pictures guys from Foreigner. You could yeah. have lied to me and said, oh, yeah, those are all the original guys. Well, Mick been. Jones was the one, the guitar player, who had been in there most recently. Right. But, you know, he's older, and he was like, all right, I think I'm done doing it. And, but, like, it's like Gene Simmons said, would you want Kiss? Like, he's like, after we're gone, you know, just put new guys in makeup. Well, then you're not seeing Kiss anymore. You're seeing some schlubs that are wearing makeup and pretending to be Kiss. Right. Like Do, every fake Kiss man that's out there. Could these guys continue on as foreigner tribute to foreigner or whatever but like the, the singer kelly hansen he's been in with foreigner yeah. for 30 years now at least yeah. and i don't want to take anything away from them. they still sound great it's just it, weird it's funny that you mentioned kiss because gene and paul have said they want kiss to continue yeah yeah with younger guys wearing the makeup yeah and, which is uh, insane to me if uh, i'm a kiss fan i don't know those kiss fans are rabid so they'll probably like it but if you have a residency in vegas and it's kiss and you know, you're just seeing guys in makeup. How do you appreciate that? You know, Kiss fans are very rabid. They are, I mean, you know, there's there's times when I'll come in. I think you've probably let me do this a couple of times over the years. Where instead of coming in as me, I'll come in as different celebrities for oh, an entire yeah. uh, couple of breaks. You or did something. the first time you're on. I think you're in for a week. And each week we had a different guest host, yeah. Tracy Morgan one day. Well, I Gene remember he was here during the Super Bowl, so it was Radio Row, where That's there right. was all the celebrities, oh, yeah. so it made sense that all these different people were there. And everybody flipped. There's there's times where I'll sit in and they'll say, ladies and gentlemen, we have some special guests who are being joined by Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. And as Gene Simmons, I'll say, I want to meet right now. I want open up the phone lines. I want to talk to the biggest Kiss fan in Tampa. <laughs> and then we'll take phone calls. Uh, all right, what's your name? Hey, man, I'm Jeff. I'm from Sarasota. All right, now, Jeff, you're a fan? Yeah, I'm a huge fan. All right, I want you to estimate in your head how much money, if you had to guess, <laughs> have you spent on Kiss? Kid. Oh, at least 10 grand. That's not a real fan. Hang on. <laughs> and, and as they're hanging up, they go, I love you, Gene. Like, they, they still, still, they still, still yeah. will give love to that guy. I don't like uh, Kiss. I mean, I don't love Kiss's music. I do like it. I don't love it like these people do. But Gene Simmons, I, I don't know. I, I love it. I love the fact that he's as arrogant as he is, and I hate that at the same time. Because, like I said to him, I go, Gene, if you have Kiss caskets and Kiss coffee... And I'm like, you water it down. When is enough enough? He's like, uh, is it is it ever enough? Uh, Nickels and you, dimes. Yeah, well, he's like, would you stop taking money? I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't sell T-shirts and stuff from my show. I don't want to keep robbing my fans, you know? That's I love what I think confidence. that they do. I mean, both of them, Paul yeah. and Gene. I've yeah. seen interviews with Paul. I mean, as a kid, I really looked up to them because they had such confidence and uh, I remember seeing an interview where somebody said, why is Kiss so amazing? That was an actual question uh-huh. at a press conference. And Paul Stanley goes, you know, 
a lot of bands are envious of Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even envious of Kiss. I was like, oh my God. He's <laughs> envious of himself. It doesn't even remember Hello. the Rock Against Drugs campaign in yeah. the 80s. Uh-huh. They had a 30 minute infomercial where Paul Stanley is not just in bed with a hot chick. Oh, I, I remember. He's in bed with 10 yeah. uh-huh. hot chicks. And Paul looks in the camera and says, if you're a girl and you have an opportunity to be with me, why would you want to ruin such a bombastic moment with drugs <laughs> and alcohol? And I was like, bombastic? Bombastic. That sounds like a terrible thing to happen to your genitalia. Yeah. Also, I don't think I get I mean, I'm pretty confident, but I would never overconfident and call it bombastic. Bombastic. You, I would be like, if, you are, if you're ready for a mediocre time, <laughs> just be honest with the girls. It's funny, Gene is consistently that guy. He's mm. consistently Gene. And then Paul has that offstage super soft voice. Yeah. And then on stage, he has these great raps uh, that I saw him once in Las Vegas where he said, All right, people, now listen. You know, I know this town, Las Vegas, Nevada, is known for its buffets. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you right now, I see a lot of people in the front row that I really want to eat. And then he started fixing his hair. And I uh, eat. What are you talking about? Uh, I saw the same show a month later in New York. I brought uh, Steve Byrne, Jeff Ross, and Jim Norton to the Kiss show in New York. And road crew walking by. Hey, this is my comedian friends. Uh, and I would ask everyone that walked by, I go, did you hear... Were you listening in Vegas when Paul said he was going to eat the front row? <laughs> and three different guys who worked for Kiss said, did you hear what he said in Omaha? Uh-huh. I said, no. Three different guys like, you didn't hear what he said on stage in Omaha? And I said, no. Three different guys said, on stage in Omaha, he said, all right, people, now listen. You know, I know this town, Omaha, Nebraska, is known for its Angus beef. <laughs> And I can tell you right now to this show, I'm going to want to sink my teeth into some meat. (laughs) And the whole entire arena went, we knew it. What? (laughs) And there's a long pause and he grabbed the mic and said, now wait a minute, hold on, hold on. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a thigh or rump roast. And the crowd went, what? Yeah. Yeah. And apparently the road crews behind the stage tuning the guitars going, what the hell's that? (laughs) Too late, too late. Dude, I have... A, uh, a story that I've been dying to tell you. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I ever told you the backup to this story, but it's this is unfolding right now in real time. Okay. And it involves Adam Levine and a massive amount of penises. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. <clears throat> there is a, uh, a friend of mine who works for Maroon 5. Oh, I shouldn't even said that. Um, well, you had us at Adam Levine. We knew who he was. <laughs> right, right. But there's a buddy of mine who worked. Gotcha. So uh, told me he, he, he's Maroon 5's in Vegas right now doing a residency. Right. I go to hang out with my friend who works for Maroon 5, and he says, dude, did I, ever, did I tell you what happened with the band and, and the guy who's a fan of yours? And I said, no. And he goes, oh, my God, you got to see this. I just posted this by everything I'm about to tell you. I just posted on my Instagram. Okay. Because it, the, the photo evidence is insane (laughs) absolutely insane there's a story that i've told that i'm also not supposed to tell okay nobody's listening so i always edit out who it's about right a friend of mine who's in a heavy metal band that you could argue without question you name the top five heavy metal bands of mtv from the 80s okay top five and don't guess because i'm not gonna answer easily top five heavy metal bands of the 80s um in um on mtv that guy uh, told me a story one night about how they still they still tour and they still make money. They did a big festival tour in Europe years ago where the headliner was ACDC. Okay. Brian Johnson, the singer of ACDC, comes into the band's dressing room to say hello. The band is naked. <laughs> okay. They're getting ready to go on stage. They're putting right. on, you know, they're getting ready to go out on stage and, and rock out. Brian Johnson apparently is a really nice guy he's I've, the sweetest guy ever that's what i keep hearing from yeah. people i never met the guy he's holding court at the entrance to the dressing room and he's looking around the dressing room and saying hi to everybody making eye contact and he looks at the drummer and he starts staring at the drummer before he finally walks in and goes hey man did you know you've got a giant penis on your back <laughs> and the drummer goes what are you talking about and he goes your tattoo is a giant penis and the drummer explains it's a dragon. 
Okay. It's an angry dragon. He goes, I know it's a dragon, but look, it looks like the shape of his two testes on the bottom and a big head on top. Now the whole band is looking at him going, oh, my God. <laughs> turn, hold up. Just turn around. Turn around. And they're all, they're all taking pictures of him. And they're like, dude, see how on the bottom it looks like testicles? And, you see, and he's looking at the tattoo for the first time going, what the yeah. hell? <laughs> and then he realizes you back that too? when the singer looks at him and says, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be a jerk. Okay, I'm just, I'm really looking at your tattoo for the first time, and I got to be honest, it does not look like your dragon is breathing fire. <laughs> it's yeah. all over your back. <laughs> he thinks they're messing with him, so he goes, shut up, come on, it's time to go on stage, let's go rock, and I'll put my shirt on, and then he yeah. gets up, but he knows what he saw, right. and he's in front of 60,000 people thinking about this giant penis on, penis on his back. On back yeah. He calls the tattoo shop the next day in the United States, and... And gets a guy on the phone and goes, hey, you think it's funny? You put a big penis on me? Is that funny to you? And the guy at the tattoo shop goes, yeah. Um, we got a lot of complaints about that guy. Uh, uh, apparently he was putting penises <laughs> on everybody. <laughs> and uh, we actually sat him down. We sat him down uh, a couple of weeks ago and we said, hey, be honest. No, 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 no. No, be honest. Are you putting penises on people? What, what are you doing? <laughs> And he said, can I make a phone call? Mm -hmm. And we said, go ahead. And he fled. Oh. He, uh, he, uh, just, uh, but listen, next time you come back in, we'll cover her up. Right. No charge, all right? Just, uh, I mean, that's a big penis you yeah, got. Yeah. But we'll cover it up, no charge. So the next day, he's got another show day with his band. He hasn't seen his bandmates in 48 hours. He walks into the dressing room. He feels everybody's eyes on him when he walks in. And he goes... I got a big penis on me, okay? <laughs> and everyone, everyone's got questions. Like, dude, I thought you were friends with that guy. He goes, I love that guy. He was my boy. And we used to party together. I don't know why he would do that to me. I mean, he did a couple of my tattoos, but I thought we were friends. All right. Someone who was paying attention said, a couple of your tattoos. And he goes, yeah. Oh, no. Well, because I thought he just did the, the dragon. He goes, no, he did the dragon. And then on my leg, he did the uh, Jesus. He did... <laughs> and they all they all freeze. He undoes his his belt, pulls his pants down. They're all staring at the tattoo, and he's the first one to notice. Oh my god! He had no idea. He'd been walking around for years with a tattoo of Jesus. It looks like a penis. aroused. Uh, oh, <laughs> fully oh, aroused. Okay, <laughs> new miracle. So, <laughs> fast forward to today. Maroon Five is in Las Vegas. They're performing shows right. uh, at the at Park MGM. My buddy who works for Maroon 5 says, I never told you what happened. My buddy uh, is a huge fan of yours. He makes Adam Levine's guitars. Okay. And he's a huge fan of yours. And he Adam asked to have a guitar made with uh, specifications that for something, for some sound. And so the guy had the guitar made and sent it over. And then a month later said... Hey, did you get that guitar? And I said, Oh yeah, Adam's playing it. He he loves it. He right. goes, Did you look at it? <laughs> and he goes, No. And he goes, Oh my God, I feel terrible. D don't tell him because I feel bad that you guys haven't noticed. But I just put a joke in there. Uh -huh. And he goes, What's the joke? And he goes, Look at the guitar. It's covered in penises. <laughs> Where? All dude, that I post. He, look at my uh -huh. on my Instagram right now at Craig Gas Comedy. With two S's. It's, I have video of Adam oh, yeah, playing oh, the yeah. guitar on stage. Yeah. And it's, it's a sun, it's a guitar with um, uh, flowers uh -huh. all over it. But if you look, the flowers are covered <laughs> in penises. Oh, it's yeah. all over the guitar. At Craig Gas Comedy with two S's, and you'll see it. He's playing this guitar on stage every night. And the guy who made the guitar, he did it because he was inspired by the story uh, about uh, Brian yeah, yeah. Johnson finding the penises. And he thought it'd be funny to put penises on this guitar. <laughs> that guitar is loaded. Is that Carmen watching yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, penises? Yeah, I just saw it. That, that guitar is covered in penises. Oh, and if you, if you look at the sunflowers, the sunflowers are pubes. Yeah. The oh, sunflowers are pubes. Yeah, and Adam Levine has been playing this guitar on. So he's getting. They're getting ready to do more shows of the residency, and he has no idea this, this. Now, to be fair, the penises are on the back of the guitar, right? But right. but so Still, was, yeah, that is yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I would even pick up on that 
because uh, it's not very obvious until you look at it and then you see it. Like, yeah, now I get it. Yeah, and the guy feels bad because he's like, if if I tell Adam now, right, now I'm gonna you, look yeah. like I'm gonna look like an ass. So. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, are you and uh, John Oliver buddies? I just scrolled down and saw that. Uh, no, I just worked with him for the first time uh, two weeks ago. He did four secret shows in New York, and he asked me to. Or no, the club asked me to. One club asked me to open for him, and the other club asked me to follow him, which is. Um, uh, going on after a really famous comedian is, yeah, that's is right. really, really yeah. tough. I did a show once uh, a few months ago. I was scheduled at 11.30 at the comedy store. Right. I show up at 11 o'clock, and when I walked in, they, uh, uh, I could feel like a weird energy in the room. Uh, the bouncer was being really weird. He goes, hey, good night tonight. And I was like, oh, yeah, what's going on? He goes, go ahead and take a look. Chris Rock's on stage. There's like a hundred people in there. Chris Rock is on stage. I'm watching Chris's set, and one of the managers makes his way across the comedy store floor, and he goes, uh, "Hey, Greg." He goes, "Chris Rock." I go, "Yeah, I'm watching. This is yeah, awesome." Man. And he goes, um, "He might do ten minutes. He, he might do ninety. We're not sure. But as soon as he's done, he's going to say, all right, please welcome Greg Gass.'" And I was like, "Oh, what a, <laughs> oh, that's a terrible good luck." That's you get the best show of your life. Of your life? Mm. You're like a small crowd of a hundred people, yeah. and he's gonna introduce oh, someone that you're gonna go, man. who is that's like that's like going to a rock club, like a tiny rock club, and they go, We have some guests who want to jump on stage. Please welcome the Rolling Stones. What? Right. No! no! Mick Jagger, Keith, and start me up. Satisfaction. You guys want some more? Yeah, <laughs> all right. Please welcome Corey Feldman. <laughs> what? No! No! I'm Corey Feldman uh, in that story. You know what happened to my dad? Uh, I, I think I've told this before. My dad, in the heyday of Dice in the late 80s, my dad went to uh, Grandpa's Comedy Club in Staten Island. It was the only comedy club we had in Staten Island. The rest you have to go to the city for. And uh, he went there just on a whim to go see whoever was there. And they said, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special guest tonight. Please welcome Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, wow. Can you imagine that in, the, in like the heyday? Whoa. My dad was blown away, you know. That's so awesome. By the uh, way, I got a text message saying, uh, who is the band uh, who had the big penis tattoo? I think I'll, I know. I'll, I'll, we can talk about it off the air, but I'll <laughs> say this. Uh, when you come out to Side Splitters this weekend, I'll tell you the name. I'll, 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 stage. There I'll you go. tell the whole story at Side Splitters this weekend. Uncensored. You know you you know you are the weirdest. I shouldn't say weird. You're not weird, but you're everything about. I don't understand you. He's I don't understand Gump. your life. Yeah, he's Forrest Gump. You are in the middle of everything. You know famous people. Uh, I I think you're very funny and you're a super nice guy. So mm -hmm. I so right there that should be said alone. But like you're playing at Side Splitters this weekend and you're here on Monday. Yeah. Why? Because I'll do every radio and TV station in town. And then every station, like I'll do a sports station. Right. And I'll talk about the viral stuff I've done at the Super Bowls with Tom sure. Brady and Peyton Manning. And when the Cubs won the World Series and I was with Bill Murray. Yeah. Um, which, is still, which is so funny. Like Bill Murray, the premier fan for, and you're there, and then there you are. He was right behind me. Yeah. I was in the so third funny. row. Eddie Vedder was in the first row. Yeah. John Cusack, second row. I was behind John Cusack, and then Bill Murray was behind me. That's so hilarious. And Bill Murray showed up right at the very end. Uh, and I'll be a different type of guest for different shows. And then obviously here is where, I mean, this is where I'm most comfortable talking about. Gene Simmons hates me. Yeah. I lived at Eddie Van Halen's house. Right. I'm the first comedian ever opened for Metallica. I married Corey Taylor and his wife. Oh, that's and, right. You know, so. Yeah, she's uh, hot, isn't she? Hot? She's beautiful. I followed her for a while on Instagram not knowing it was his wife. Get out yeah, of here. Were you leaving little... comments? Uh, no, 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 no. No, I just uh, followed. I followed. It's great to have two accounts. I have a private account. Oh, nice. And then I have the show account. You have a and fake I, name? I, no, no, but like I have my, my Calta, which is like pictures of my kids and stuff. Okay. You don't want to see that. No. But then I have a show account that I could do whatever I want on the show. I wonder which I one I just tagged. Want. Did I tag the personal one? or uh, The Mike Calta show is the one. Oh, we'll man. figure it out. I got to edit that. Um, uh, so I don't know what I was telling you. But yeah, but anyway, I followed her and, and then all of a sudden I saw he was talking about her. And I was like, oh, and then I realized they were married. She was smoking on he did a show in Vegas last year at uh, MGM Grand, uh, at the Grand Garden Arena. And I was with Alicia in the back of the arena. And she's got all the cherry bombs with her. So right. It's like a ton of hot chicks. And a guy with a mop 
just kept walking by with the mop. Yeah. And he was like, <laughs> and he was like hey, you know, and, she, and she's so nice. And she's like, hi. And he's like, what's up? And, then he, and he comes back over with the mop and he goes, uh, you got a... You got a boyfriend? And she goes, I do. He has no idea. Yeah. The guy on stage. Right, the guy that's responsible for bringing all these people here. Is the, the one that job. she's married to. And she yeah. goes, yeah, I do. And he goes, yeah, give you my phone number. I, 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 run, I run the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he runs the literally floor. Literally runs on the floor. He runs the floor. with the mo- It was one of the most amazing, <laughs> ballsiest. That is the weird thing about an attractive woman who's nice. Yeah. It makes you think like, oh, I think... You know what though? You, you have a, you think you have a chance? Is what you're saying? Yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty realistic. We went to we were just talking about Bird off the air. I went to Bird's movie premiere for the machine, and I have my wife and my kids sitting to my left, and I have Christy Mack, the porn star, sitting to my right. And oh, I don't wow. th- I don't think I looked to my left one time during the entire thing. <laughs> I'm just talking to her, and I mean, but I she was the sweetest, nicest. Like I wish she lived here so we can hang out. But gave no, I have felt like I had no chance. Uh, you have to have a good self awareness. You're saying you get sitting it. with your wife and kids, you had no chance with well, the porn I mean, star. Listen, you think that I've never <laughs> been somewhere with my wife or girls like call me? Uh, no, but she was just like she was so sweet and she was so nice, and she could have been like, "All right, creep, stop talking to me." And I and I loved her. I, she was great. You've had moments where women have have flirted with you in front of your wife. And, Yo, said, and said, call me? Not in front, like secretly or in front of my wife, but yeah. A- has there ever been a moment where your wife, after a public outing, said, uh, what's the deal with that girl? <laughs> she, uh, she says to me, it's weird. She, we'll be in the mall and some girl will come by. Like, I'll, I'll be out in the mall. A couple of people are like, hey, I like the show. And then she'll, there'll be a girl be like, oh, hey, how you doing? Good. Can I see her? And my wife will go, gross. And I go, why? And she goes, you had sex with her. I go, how do you know? And she goes, I she, can just tell. Is she right? Tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's always right. But I mean, I'm, I'm talking about years ago. But I mean, you know, she's always right. She could smell she could smell that kind of chick. You know what I mean? Maybe she smells the discomfort in you that you put off a different kind of like, oh, no, hey. No, I'm not that. I'm, she's, not, she's not like the jealous type. Or, no, but. Yeah, so I don't really care. It doesn't bother me. Yeah, I mean, maybe I am. Maybe I do have that different reaction to something. Is there a famous woman that, in the back of your mind, you think I really felt like there was something there? Oh, uh, it's so I tell you, it's so funny. Is um, I can't remember her name. The chick from Jerry Maguire, Renee Zellweger. Renee, Renee Zellweger. Zellweger. And can I tell you why? Uh, I met her at the MTV Movie Awards one time, and we were talking. We were, like, we were literally having a conversation, and she was. That would have been the only thing she did, and it was pretty soon after that movie came out. So she was famous, but not super famous. I mean, there were, at the time, the cast of Friends was walking around. I mean, so uh, I honestly got the vibe from her that she was in. She wanted to keep talking. And she wanted to do more. And then years later, I heard Artie Lang say the same thing on Stern. He was like, he did a movie with her, and he felt like he could have that she was into him. And I went, she is either. Nice to everybody, yeah. or uh, or she does love fat Italian guys. She may have a thing for, I mean, a type. That's funny because the one famous woman that I thought, like, well, there's something going on here, was Debbie Gibson. Oh, she out came of the blue. in. She came in on the Howard Stern show for something, and I felt a crazy vibe from her. And I've and it's funny. I was going to just say that until you mentioned that Artie also said, and I do remember listening, and I can't remember who it was. Somebody else said they met. Debbie Gibson, and they thought they had a chance with her. Nah. Like, well, maybe it's that's just her. She's just nice. But I really felt like I had a like a. Like, I can tell you, I sat with Christy Mack and talked to her, and at no point did I feel like I have a chance. At really? All. Yeah, there's a difference. There's kind of the one that's like flirty when they talk to you, and then there's the one who's just being cool. Christy Mack was just being cool, but Renee Zellweger put it out there like she was like, "So what are you doing? Where are you going? What are you drinking? You know that kind of thing." Wow. Yeah, it was good. And the thing was is that like at that time. If I'd have told half the people it was Renee Zellweger, they would have been like, who? So she was famous, but not that. Like, if you saw her, you knew who she was. By the way, in a, a obviously very platonic way, I feel like uh, uh, I'm closer friends with you guys than uh-huh. I really am. <laughs> wow, <laughs> we're buddies. Uh, why? <laughs> I've been, I don't know. When I tell you I have a memory from the last time I was here, is there any, and I don't know if Spanish has already ruined this. It's probably I, better than my memory, I can tell you that. All right, because I mentioned it in Spanish. He's like, oh, no, it probably was nothing. Do you remember anything about the last time I was here? I don't even remember when. Okay. The last, it's, I can't remember the last show. So I didn't I, mention Then I already feel better. 
Well, well I, tell me, refresh my memory, because I'll tell you if it was I bad. thought that this would have stuck with you because it was an awkward moment for me. I came over here. Uh, it's been three years since last time I was here. I okay. think the last time I was here, I was down oh, in like long? Port Charlotte. I haven't yeah. been at Side Splitters in like... Oh, you were at Vasani or one of those places. six years, yeah. yeah. So it's been six years. My first time back at uh, Side Splitters this weekend uh, in years. But the last time I was here, I was somewhere else. And I and you said, well, I'm doing the show at my house. It was it was 2020. uh uh-huh. And uh, we hung out, and then after we hung out, you go, hey, you, you showed me around the house, I thought. You go, yeah, man, this, and I go, oh, that's so cool, that's, oh, this is cool, wow, this is, and I remember saying, this is a nicer house than Mike McReady's house. Uh, yeah, I do remember and that. And then yeah. uh, you go, all right, man, well, thanks, and I go, oh, you you were walking me to the door. Oh, yeah. And I, I thought you were giving me a tour of your house. No. And I was like, oh, man. My, <laughs> my appearance is over. I thought that you were Get just... Get out. Like, no. You go, hey, follow me. And you walked me out. And I was like, oh, man, look at this. Look at oh, that. no, no, no. The only, I'll tell you right now, the only comedian we couldn't shake was Jeff Dye. The first time Jeff Dye was here, he was like, I want to see... Oh, well, you got baseballs? What do you got over here? And that, don't get me wrong. I love him, too. He could have stayed as long as he wanted to until until my wife came out. I don't want her to be around that guy. Uh, he's too good looking. <laughs> I don't need that. But no, no, no. I don't I don't remember that at all. If you came and you were like, hey, I'm going to hang out for about an hour, I'd be like, yeah, cool. I'm going to go take a shower. I don't care. I'm not that guy. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah I, I definitely... Uh, was self conscious that after I left and Spanish. <laughs> I would love, I would love so badly to be like, dude, you wouldn't leave. I, I, not at all. And Spanish, when I talked to him a couple of days ago about coming in here, I wasn't hundred percent sure before I hung up if he said I love you. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. And he, I, I was like, oh, and I was like, wait. Um, all right, I'll see you on Monday. And I was yeah, like, yeah. and I was like, you if like I that. say. If I say I love you back and that wasn't I love you, yeah, yeah. then... Would you say I love you back? I, yeah, I always say it to people. See? I tell people all the time that I love them. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, look, I, I, I guess I save it for the people I really love. Uh, I never say it back to Spanish, ever. Um, <laughs> who was... I'm trying to think. Somebody we were... You, you, when you were like answering the phones, you put a guest through one time and you were like, uh, okay, I'm going to put you on hold and then he's going to pick it up live. Okay, I love you. And I picked up the phone, and the guy was like, that guy just said I love you yeah. to me? Who was it? Do you I remember? I can't remember. It was somebody who was like a burly guy. Yeah. Like, like The Rock or somebody. Yeah. It's like Michael like, Did that guy just say, yeah. love, I love you? Yeah. Was, uh, I'm used to it now. I don't even hear it anymore. For, it was said weird. it back, though. It, I have it I've framed in my room. I have not said it back I have it. You texted it back, I love you, and I have it framed I was in hacked. my room. I was hacked. It was, no, it's not hacked. It was you. I am definitely the guy to say I love you, and I love making friends like Jim Florentine uncomfortable saying that because Jim yeah. hates that <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I love yous. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, we did a show during the pandemic, and uh, and I said, "Man, isn't it suck? We can't hug each other." And he goes, "What? <laughs> <laughs> we can't hug. Me. I want I want to be able to hug you." And he just, and I loved the hatred in his eyes. Oh, he was looking real. at me when I was yeah. saying that. I was like, yeah. "Come on, man." I don't. I don't. I'm not an anti hugger. Uh, I don't mind the hugging. Um, but I'm not a big I love you guy at all. And even get my there. parents. And is Spanish a big I love you guy? Oh, oh yeah. Man. Okay. He it's overuses gross. it as the problem. No, it's not He fake. overuses cheap. it to true. where it it's seems, cheap. yeah, yeah. Nah. It's cheap. Nah, do you guys have your own personal issues with love and male affection? No, we don't. The issue is, is we don't love you. No, you love me. I know you. You very clear. You love me very much. Sorry, you don't have to say it. I get it. Uh, I am traveling in September. To see two Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam shows in Chicago and two in Austin. Mm. And I'm very excited about it. I'm, uh, uh, I don't know if I'm going to catch any Pearl Jam. I'm going to Seattle from here. And I think I'm going to see Mike when I get out to Seattle. Yeah. Um, Let I, him know I'll be at the Austin show. If you want to hang out. Austin and where else? What is Chicago. It? In Chicago? Oh, man, Chicago. Oh, let, so let me tell you this. I don't think I've told you this. So I go up to New York to see the band at Madison Square Garden. I want to be on the floor. I pay a ridiculous amount of money to get one ticket on the floor. Okay. okay? So I go there, and my buddy Frank, um, who is a fireman, he calls me up. I'm at the hotel, and he calls me up. He goes, what are you doing? I go, nothing. I'm in the hotel. He goes, oh, you told me about this. I tell you the follow through? Let, no. me, let me tell okay, it so people listen. Yeah. So Frank, he's like, I'm coming to get you, and we're driving over to Eddie Vedder's hotel. And I went, what? And he goes... He, my buddy is a retired fireman, and he runs the FDNY hockey uh, team, the Florida, the, the fire department hockey team. 
and they play a big game versus the NYPD as on ESPN every year. And it was a big deal. Isn't there like a lot of fights that break out? Yeah, in the, yeah. totally. Okay. <laughs> so Frankie has a, it's 9-11 also that the show is happening on. In New York City. In New York City. Right. So uh, he has a jersey for Eddie and somehow through Kelly Slater and a contact, the manager calls and says, Eddie wants to meet you. Bring him the jersey. Come on by the hotel. So we go by the hotel and they have already left for uh, practice, but they left the message to leave the jersey there. He wanted to wear it that night. We're like, all right, cool. Sucks that we didn't get to meet him, but totally cool. You go to the show. The show ends. No jersey. No mention of FDNY hockey. No nothing. Disappointing, but whatever. You expect, you know, he's a major rock star in Madison Square Garden. I fly back the next day. I come here. Frankie calls me at about... 11 o'clock in the morning, and he says, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? He goes, Pearl Jam's manager just called. He said he forgot to bring the jersey to give it to Eddie, and he feels awful. Eddie is pissed off. So what they would like to do is have him and a guest come to the Philadelphia show the next night, which was that night, and bring the jersey, and Eddie's going to wear it on the stage there. So I'm ready to get on a plane and fly to Philadelphia, but Frankie's like, I'm bringing my daughter, and I was like, oh, he can't beat that. So he and his daughter drove down to Philadelphia, go to the show, go backstage, meet Eddie. Eddie takes pictures, takes a jersey, does the whole thing. Then, during the show, takes an encore break, comes out wearing the jersey. Oh, my God. Talks about how he forgot to wear it the night before, brings Frankie up on stage. No. I was like, you've <laughs> got to be kidding me. No. Uh, and uh, thanks him and thanks to the fire department and everybody cheers. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So, I mean, great for Frankie. That's one of the coolest things ever. <sighs> yeah. um, I have a Pearl Jam story that I've never told you. Oh. And the Is it re- about penises on their back? <laughs> no, but it's it's the re- there's a good reason why I haven't told you because I feel like you would make fun of me. Yes, I'm positive I will. Um, it's and uh, it's a terrible idea to share the story. Okay, uh, because it's the, I'll actually end up uh, getting refunds for my show <laughs> at Side Splitters because okay. it, it is not a funny story at all. But I'm just going to ask you to just hear me out. Uh, this is uh, the most unfunny story. <laughs> And it's not what my plan was. Okay. I had stories I wanted to tell you, but I uh, just because you're bringing this up, I've always wanted to say this to you. I have uh, I have friends who are uh, uh, obviously a lot more famous than I am, and uh, who will go out of their way to not be recognized by people. Right. I am the opposite. I don't know how you feel when people recognize. I love you. everybody. I get excited. Yeah. It's like I will talk to people until they get to the point where they, <laughs> they finally are like Jesus. Like, we got to shut up. Yeah. And they go, we're going to leave. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> I'll come. Come on, you're my fan. <laughs> and I want. So uh, I have a moment like that at us. I'm a huge Seahawks fan. I'm at a Seahawks bar in Las Vegas before I moved there, and this woman comes up and says, "I'm sorry to bother you, but my husband." is your biggest fan. And I go, where's he at? What's his name? And she goes, he's over there. And I go, let's go say hi. And I, she goes, hey, Bob, this is great. And I go, what's up, Bob? And I end up hanging out with him. He's a sweetheart. Uh, he, he's one of the nicest people I've ever met. He's uh, morbidly obese. Uh, he's a special ed teacher. Uh, he's got his teenage kids with him at this restaurant slash bar. And the teenage kids love him, which I thought, well, that's weird. Right. You never see teenager kids no, like, yeah. like, their, like their parents. And he's got this um, uh, incredible story about all these health problems he's been having because he's morbidly obese. At one point, he was in a coma uh, for a week, I think, or a couple weeks. And he tells me this insane story. He goes, oh, yeah, tell him the story about the music. And the wife says, oh, yeah, while Bob was in a coma, I would come in and play his favorite band on a boombox. And he had a physical reaction in the coma. He had tears oh, wow. coming on his face while he was in a coma. And, I was and that like, was the uh, insane clown posse. <laughs> 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 and I said, who's your favorite band? He goes, uh, Pearl Jam. And I go, Pearl Jam's your favorite band? And he goes, yeah. And I go, do you know I'm friends with one of the guys in Pearl Jam? He goes, oh, dude, you get to do a lot of crazy stuff, man. And I, I felt really guilty that... Uh, there's no good reason to like fall into weird stuff. It's yeah. just weird stuff just happens. And I did, so I just, uh, I exchanged phone numbers with the guy. Every time I go to Vegas, I call up Bob, I take him out to dinner and he's so nice. I'm just concerned about his health. So right. I keep asking. So you keep getting him fatter by taking him to dinner. <laughs> good Why point. Hey Bob, meet me at the gym. 
Good yeah. point. <laughs> well, that's funny because at dinner, I, I would ask, like, you know, what's going on with your health? And, like, do you do you walk at all? Do you? And he goes, oh, my doctor says I should, but I... It's hard because I'm I'm literally physically picking children up all day and I'm just I'm just beat when I get home. I just yeah. need to sleep and and I said, but like twenty minutes you can't and it gets to a point where even his wife is like, Bob's really tired. And I go, But he can't walk twenty minutes. Like I go, dude, I'll how about this? I'll I'll give you a call uh when I get home. Let, let's go for a walk every day. I'll give you a call and we'll and we'll, we'll walk for twenty minutes. Uh -huh. Which is what we did for the next You and Bob. From different cities, walking from different, different cities, every, different parts of the world. That's dedicated. I, it started out as 20 minutes up to 30. Then we started working, walking 60 minutes a day. Wow. Every day. And his health problems started changing. And um, at that point, I run into McReady mm -hmm. in Minneapolis. I'm doing a show in, in Minneapolis. Mike comes to my show. And then the next day, Mike's got a show in a much bigger room. And uh, I go see Pearl Jam, and, and they do a sound check during the day. And I tell Mike about my buddy. I go, did they ever tell you about my, do you know that I have a walking buddy? He goes, <laughs> you have, that was his reason. Yeah. Yeah, a walking, I go, it's as heterosexual as, it's, yeah, it's, it's long distance walking it's buddy. It's a long distance buddy of mine who I walk with every day. You got to hear this though. This guy, is, he's morbidly obese, he's got all these health problems. And while he was in a coma, his wife played your music uh -huh. and he had a physical reaction. He had tears streaming down his face while he was in a coma listening to your music. I would never ask this for anybody else. Right. But the next time you perform in Vegas, is it okay if I send him to this show to meet you? And he said, of course. And he started making jokes and he's like, maybe the band will take him for a walk around the building. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yeah. He goes, yeah. Uh -huh. Whenever we come to Vegas, we'll hey, hook Bob, it up. I'm going to play this next song. You run until it's over. <laughs> Well, six months later, uh, his uh, Bob's wife calls me. She says, hey, where are you at? I just got off a plane from a flight uh, from Green Bay. And she said, I have some bad news. Uh, Bob had another medical incident. He's got, it was 48 hours or 72 hours to live. He's, oh, he's, uh, he had become septic. Mm -hmm. And um, she said, so I just wanted to let you know. And I didn't know how to react to that uh, except to just get in my car and just drive. I was living in LA, right. I'm going to drive to Vegas to go be with Bob. Yeah. And I'm driving up to Vegas when it dawns on me. You should have walked. I, <laughs> I never got that chance. I knew you were going to make fun of me in this whole story. I never got the chance to turn Bob on to, to that experience of meeting his favorite band. And it was a secret that I had. Right, like, right, like right. we would talk about Pearl Jam almost every day. And he'd say, dude, did you see Pearl Jam's going on tour? And I'd go, oh, Bob, mm -hmm. those, those tickets. <laughs> you're not. You're not going to get. I was just building up this story just so I could blow his mind. Right. So I start texting McReady, and I said, uh, "Hey, man, uh, I don't know if you remember. Uh, I told you I had a walking buddy. You said you would meet him. He's not going to get the chance because um, I just found out he's he's got uh, forty eight hours, seventy two hours to live. I'm driving to Vegas right now to be with him, but I want to tell you what he would have said to you." Because he talked about you every day. And now I'm writing a fan letter to my friend Mike. <laughs> from your walking buddy's from my, perspective. From my walking buddy's Jesus. perspective. Because I thought it was important that right. Mike hears what Bob wanted to say. Right, okay. And then uh, Mike texted me back and said, what's his name? And I said, it's Bob. It's Bob Miles. Mm -hmm. And then an hour goes by. How and ironic. His name is Miles. <laughs> Miles. <laughs> I knew you were going to make fun of this the whole, the whole week. And I'm about an hour outside of Los Angeles when Mike uh, texted me a video. And uh, this is the video. He wrote music for Bob to die to 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 cross over. Yeah, to. yeah, yeah. And Mike sent me four videos of him saying, "Hey, Bob, this is for you. I wrote this for you." And and uh, I called Bob's wife and I said, "Hey, uh, is how is Bob doing right now? I'm on my way." And she said, "He he's in and out. He's in and out." And I said, "Okay." I'm about to forward you some videos. Play this for him right now. Yeah, yeah. His favorite guitar player of his favorite band just wrote some music for him. And I'm on my way up. 
And she called me back about an hour later and said, um, he, uh, he opened his eyes a little bit and I said, hey, Craig's coming. And he, and he smiled and she said, and look at this, your favorite guitarist, Mike McGreedy, just wrote some music for you. And uh, he, she said he sat up in bed and pulled his eyelids down and tears are streaming down his face while he's watching the videos. Whoa. And the last thing Bob Miles saw was his favorite guitarist of his favorite band <laughs> playing music, music that he him. wrote for him. And I'm not going to sell any tickets to Side Splitters. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, no, wait a second. Is like, anyone you? else crying right now? <laughs> it's amazing. It's the most powerful moment I've ever... And it was crazy because he loved Kiss... He loved see like he loved everything I right, loved right. except me. Yeah, cokehead. I'm getting all these experiences. Bob wasn't, and then Bob got the most profound experience. Yeah, that's amazing. On his last moment on Earth. Can you call Mike and be like, "You're not going to believe this. Yeah. I have another fat friend. Wait. He also <laughs> loves you. He doesn't even want anything. He's just letting to let you know." I, honest to God, <laughs> the next time I I saw Calta after I saw him in uh, in Chicago. I didn't think you would actually say it on the air, but you said it. And oh, I, 100%. I, I so respect you for doing it. I was on stage with Pearl Jam, and Mike texted me and said, dude, I'm at the show. And I go, oh, let's meet up. And I, and I, I got some stuff for you. I got like... You, you, you got me an Eddie Vedder pick, and then you got me a... Uh, you had a, The best part was you sent me a picture of the set list. Oh, the set list. So that I knew what was coming, you know? Yeah. yeah. And Mike goes, uh, I go, I go, I'm coming out. I got something for you. Where are you at? And he goes, handicap section. <laughs> And I and I was like, oh, I, I know where that's at. He must be standing outside. Oh, this will be easy. I know exactly where the handicap section. But he's not standing outside the handicap section. He's in yeah. the handicap <laughs> section in a wheelchair. Yeah. Well, there was there was uh, we had tickets to two nights, and the first night was was floor general admission. So I'm the equivalent of being like maybe ten rows back by standing, you know. Yeah. And it was amazing. Then the second night, I have seats. Well, you can't go from just being on the floor 10 rows away yeah. and now go and sit in the home plate. It just didn't make sense. Yeah. So Pete's like, my buddy Pete's like, I got this, I got this. So I come back to the hotel and he goes, the good news and bad news. I go, what? He goes, we're on the floor and we're right by the stage. And I go, okay, what's the bad news? I go, how expensive? He goes, no, no, it wasn't that expensive. We're in the handicap section. And I looked at him and I go, come on. And he goes, dude, we're there. And I go, what do you have to tell them? And he goes, I didn't have to tell them anything. The tickets were available, and I bought them. And I go, but we're not handicapped. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'll get a cane. I'll do something. There. I'll let you push me in a wheelchair if I have to. I was like, Jesus Christ. So we go there, and it is a pretty wide open area right but up against the stage. It's up against the the uh, security, the pit. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah. against the security. Uh, and I'm in there, and the guy from the Murder Ball documentary is in there in his wheelchair. <laughs> no I swear way. to God. And, uh, Stephen and, Hawking's in there. Yeah. <laughs> no, there was a bunch of people in wheelchairs. There was also a deaf uh, people in there, and the lady was signing yeah. the lyrics. And when Yellow Ledbetter came on, I went over there, and I had to, like, I wanted to videotape the signs so I could figure out what the lyrics of that song actually are. <laughs> box or a bag <laughs> so <laughs> and i and i couldn't and so i was very conscious about blocking people i wanted to make sure they all had the best positions and all that and then at one point eddie jumps off the stage and he's got a bottle of wine and he and security runs on they hand everybody cups and then eddie comes and he pours the wine into thing and i'm like I'll kick a guy out of his wheelchair to get in this, but me and Murderball are up against the side. I'm like, I am not missing this. And I actually got a picture of Eddie pouring me a bottle of wine into the cup that Pete took, and uh, then we we drank wine. And I'm like, I just drank Eddie Vedder's wine. And I'm like, any of you Crips want some of this or sharing it with the people? I had a great time. I had a great time. And then the, uh, it was just a, it was a fun time. And I was like, now how do we ever see them again? I just drank wine with Eddie in the show in the front row. How do I ever go to see Not him bad. again? So, well, I did. I did enjoy my Madison Square Garden show that uh, I ended up paying out the ass for and been going, but it was still such a great experience. I think. Yeah, because yeah. September 11th in New York City, yeah. Madison Square Garden. I mean, that's just it's a that's a special moment. But I'm a huge fan of the music, so uh, you know, I'm going. I'm going to two nights in Chicago, and then I'm going to two nights in uh, in Austin, Texas, and I've never been to Austin, so I'm excited about that. I, I think I saw him right after you saw him at Madison Square Garden. I saw him in St. Louis, and um, my buddy who runs my website lives in St. Louis. And I, I didn't even think if he would be interested. So I, on the day of the show, I said, uh, hey, are you a fan of Pearl Jam by chance? And he goes, that's my favorite band in the world. And I go, 
is it really? Yeah. And he goes, yeah. And I go, you want to see him? I have a surprise for you. I go, do you want to see him tonight? And he mm-hmm. goes, can you get us in? And I go, oh, I can get us in. I go, but you got to get there early. Yeah. I go, you got to get there really early. And he goes, oh, okay. And I was like, like you need to be there early. And then um, he showed up at 6 o'clock. And I was like, hey, we, we got to go in. We got to get tested. And he was like, tested? And I go, yeah, we need to do a COVID test before we go backstage. And he was like, backstage? <laughs> and he is... Um, uh, he's uh, uh, autistic. Uh-huh. So he's very awkward socially. Yep. I know and, a bunch of those people. And we're, <laughs> are you staring at somebody in this room? <laughs> right, right at me. Right, right at me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're looking right at my eyes. I actually sat with him at the last show I went to. <laughs> and uh, we ended up sitting down, me and my buddy Craig, who does the website, sitting down with McCready. And we were talking when somebody walked in and said, uh, um, Mike, Ed's. Ed's adding four songs that you guys haven't played yet. <laughs> so you got Stones in there rehearsing some songs. He goes, oh, okay. All right, I better go. Uh, he goes, we got 30 minutes before I got to get on stage. Let me go practice. I'm like, all right. And we kept talking and laughing. And he goes, all right, I got to go. I got to go. And, and then we kept talking and laughing. He goes, all right, you know what? I really should go. And then somebody else I know that works in the band comes in. And we're talking. And I see Mike go, hey, I, I got to leave. It was really nice to meet you. And my buddy Craig goes, uh, before you leave, <laughs> I just want to tell you that your music changed my life. And Mike sat back down. Oh, really? And listened to him for five minutes, oh. and I was like, "What? I, that's yeah." I mean, he's just a better human being. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that I I really have had moments with their music, but I don't ever plan to tell him about it. <laughs> I don't, how much I'll never like. be that guy ever. Only because you know that now from years and years of meeting famous people, like you know what to say and not to say now. Yeah. Had you not had right. all these years of experience. You would have been like, it's my shot. I'm, I'm taking my shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do some, it. Sometimes when you don't know if you're ever going to get that chance again, you got to get everything out. So I get it. You ever yeah. had a really bad one? Like a real, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Uh, I really wish I hadn't just spilled my guts to that guy. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> Is Carmen thinking of the same? No, it's, oh. we uh, talked about Creed this morning. Yeah. When Creed was in their heyday, I, 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 I mean, I was... I was talking to Mark Germani and the guitar player, and they have a song called uh, One, and it's about, it was like about racial harmony, you know, and I was telling, and at the time, they only had really like one or two songs out, but I was so nervous, I was like, hey, I, I don't want to tell you, I really like that song once, not one, mm. once, and I, and he goes, yeah, once, it's a good one, and I go, yeah, and I go, I, I said it wrong, and now he's saying it wrong back to me to mock me, and I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know what to say, and I was like, it's, it's not, if you think it's called Once, but as I was about to say One, I was like, wait, that's Metallica song, so theirs must be Once, and I just got all nervous and said the wrong thing, and then he said it back to me, and I walked away embarrassed, but I went, one day I will tell that story on the air to him. You know what I mean? And, and did you? Funny. No, I never, I never, we've had him on the show before, but I never, I'll get there one day when I have a sit down with him. Does he, uh, I know that Bert says when he was in a band with Mark Tremonte that Mark Tremonte would never acknowledge it. Yes. And then Mark came on the show and, and said, I've never heard, right? He, he said to me, not only was I not in a band, <laughs> but I've never met anyone named Bert in my life. He, <laughs> yeah. goes, he goes, that's a name you remember. And he's like, and I've never met anybody named Bert in my whole life. And then off the air, does he say, I'm just. No, no. This he, was back serious at uh, a slash oh. show. I went to go see him in Orlando. He was there backstage at Slash, and I go, I got to ask you a question. I got this buddy, Bert, he's a comedian, this is years ago. And, I, and he was like, okay. I go, he swears that he was in a band with you at FSU. And I was, he was like, really? He goes, what's his name? And I go, Bert. And he goes, mm. I go, not in the band? He goes, not in the band. I don't think I've ever met anybody in my life named Bert. <laughs> so uh, he goes, it's kind of a name you remember. And I was like, yeah, I believe you. I get. I believe you're into the story and not Bert's. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so, so no one that you really like, uh, like, fawned over that you embarrassed yourself with what about the letter <laughs> <laughs> you wrote a letter you wrote a fan letter yeah, that was good Carmen I forgot about that yeah. I, was, uh, I wrote a fan letter and had to sit on that story for years until he was on the show I wrote a fan letter to Richie Sambora and put it in his mailbox at his house and uh and never said a word about it until we had him on the air and I and I told him live on the before air before you even tell him do you already look back and realize how creepy that was? <laughs> oh, she'd go to his I house. I think it was a week later where I was like, I can't. Well, the situation of how I got to his house was Dear not so good. Yeah. <laughs> Your long hair feels so nice between my fingers. Uh, his, his father came in and bought him a birthday cake for his birthday at my Uncle John's bakery. 
my uncle John called me up and goes, do you know this guy? And I go, yeah. And he goes, I got to make this cake for him, but I don't know anything about him. And uh, but, so I sent him a couple Give of pictures. Him the address. Well, I, I sent him a couple of pictures of the, of, the uh, of his guitars and stuff. So he made it like his guitars. And then when I was there, I was like, Give me that address, and I went over to the house, uh, and I I never forget. I pulled up, and there was a dude in the driveway, and I was like, "Hey, man!" And he goes, "Hey, what's up?" I go, "Is this Richie's house?" He goes, "Yeah." And I go, "Sambora?" And he goes, "Yeah." I go, "Is he here?" And he goes, "No." And he goes, "I'll be I can't back." Believe he even went that far with you. Well, because I I don't know. He was just a dude, and I, he oh, goes, okay. He's, he'll he's be back in like an hour. I was like, "All right, cool, thanks." And I left, and then I came back, and his mother was outside, and I didn't want to bother her. So when she went inside, I just put the letter in the mailbox. <laughs> I wish to God, Craig, it would hurt every ounce of my body, but I wish to God I had a copy of it to read to you. I would lo- I would love nothing more than to sit here and just melt in my seat. It was just, I don't even know. I couldn't even imagine today what it would say. And what was Richie's reaction when he's actually sitting in front of you? You said, I went I, to your I don't home think address. I cared. And also, I had read... Our, I had read uh, stories of him in you know over the years where he was like the one thing you do when you cross the line is when you show up at my house. He's like that's cross the line. I was like oh he's talking about me. Oh uh, yeah. I mean I'm Ooh. sure I'm sure there are several teenage girls before me who showed up at his house. But I was like oh man I don't know. So we when he brought up I don't know, he he didn't seem too phased by it. You guys were more phased yeah. by it than he yeah. was, <laughs> and uh, he laughed it off. And I was like yeah I don't believe I just told the whole world that but. It was, it was true. a beautiful moment. It was a beautiful moment. Jay uh, Okerson has a story about, I was so coked up that night, I don't remember <laughs> anything about this night, but uh, apparently backstage at a Slipknot uh, system of a down show, he, um, uh, we were standing backstage when Max Weinberg came backstage with his son, who was like 10. Right. And he go, and his his son was dressed up in a Slipknot outfit. And he goes, oh, this is my son Jay. He's a big fan of yours. And, and apparently Corey was like, oh, cool. What's up, little buddy? And, and then... Uh, Years later, Jay ends up being the drummer of the band. Uh-huh. And Okerson runs into Weinberg backstage at some show, and he's like, oh, I'm going to blow this guy's mind. He's like, hey, dude, I got something crazy I want to tell you. And the guy goes, yeah, hold on, hold on. Hey, what's up? And, oh, he, and he's, hugging, he's got friends. They're like, oh, what's up? And, and then he goes, uh, yeah, so anyways. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you, you got a story? Oh, what's up? And then the guy's, uh-huh. and then he finally goes, all right, so what's your story? And, and Jay tells it with all this emotion, and he goes, and you were a little kid. I was right there when you first met him. Now you're the drummer. And he goes, cool. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. Uh, maybe Jay was wearing fingerless gloves. <laughs> that might have been. I don't know why he does that. Uh, why? I don't. He's the last person to wear jean shorts and fingerless gloves. Yeah. yeah. He's, he'll never let it die. I love him. No, he's great. I absolutely He's great. Him. him and Bobby are doing the bonfire together. So oh, that's right. I love it. Yeah. That's right. I listen to me. Craig Gas is, <laughs> is walking out of my house. Out of my <laughs> house now. It's done. No tours. This isn't even anything close to what I was planning on coming in. I, listen to me. About. This worked out perfect. Uh, <laughs> he is going to be in side sports. What do we have? Thursday through Thursday Sunday? Thursday through Sunday. Thursday through Sunday, yeah. Are you uh, with anybody that you know? Uh, there's going to be a couple people stopping by to do sets. Uh, I did a set uh, with Josh Wolf uh, over the weekend. Oh, yeah. I love town. Josh. Love Josh. Yeah. Josh and I started out together. So uh, me, Josh, Joey Diaz, and Brody Stevens all started out the same open mic. Wow. But, uh, yeah, six shows this weekend. And uh, if you have time later this week, I have some actual stories for you about Metallica and Kiss. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, one of the things I admire about you You've always been available to me, and I remember the one time that you told me no. Do you remember what it was? Um, oh, was it something really specific about Pearl Jam? No, 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 no. It was no, when no. he asked you to leave his house. <laughs> 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 I do no, remember that. Yeah. I do remember that. Uh, when Tracy Morgan got into the uh, bus accident. <laughs> oh, you wanted no me to call one, in. No one does a better Tracy Morgan mm-hmm. than you. I'm like, you got to call in as Tracy Morgan. And you were like, buddy. Somebody, a friend of ours, died on that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Do and I went, how dare you have integrity? Are we done? I-, I was like, how dare you have integrity? <laughs> I was like, yeah. So, not only did somebody die, somebody else uh, got into a coma at the hospital. His girlfriend hears about the coma, comes to the hospital to see him, where she runs into his other girlfriend oh. and his other girlfriend. <laughs> Whoops. And his other girlfriend oh. and his other six women Good for showed up while he was in a coma, all thinking they were his girlfriend. Yeah. And I, my, I just thought, what are the odds that he saw the girls coming and said, oh, my God, here, hold my milk. Just, yeah. <laughs> and just pretended to be in a coma. Yeah. Can I tell you, I've been to a funeral that that's happened before, too. 
when yeah. girlfriends showed Girlfriend up? Girlfriends showed up. Uh, all right, listen to me. Go see Craig Gass. He's going to be at Side Splitters this weekend. SideSplittersComedy.com. I'm telling you, nobody does a better impersonation than Craig, and we didn't even get that. We didn't even get to We didn't even get that. Either. All right, if you have time later this week. All right. All right. All right. We got we to gotta wrap it up, I guess. Uh, have a great day. We will see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.